ask this question, what happens when the reduced echelon form is not the identity? In other words, you start with A and I, and you do all these row actions over and over, and you get to the reduced echelon form, and it's some E, and you get a matrix B over here, but E, but this reduced echelon form is not the identity. This is the situation when A is singular. Remember, we say a matrix is non-singular if the reduced echelon form is the identity. If we did this, then what, what's going to happen? We're not going to be able to find the inverse. Then, then we just get, just have B times A equals E, and we need B times A equal to identity. So we haven't found it. We did not find an inverse. But let's look again at this situation that we talked about before. So this is a sheet from earlier today. And we said that if A, ha if A has an inverse, OK? So if A has an inverse, if A has an inverse, then we can solve the system AX equal to D for any D any t in R, and we get the solution x equals a inverse d. We talked about this already, right? And for example, if d equals 0, we solve the homogeneous system, and we get the solution to the homogeneous system is this inverse matrix times the 0 vector, but any matrix times the 0 vector is just a 0 vector. So we actually find out that, this, that we have a theorem. This is the proof, what we just derived that a homogeneous system, AX equals 0, where A has an inverse, has only one solution. X has to be 0. In other words, the null space of A is the 0, only 0 alone. That means A is non-singular. So if A has an inverse, then A is non-singular. So let's just putting this all together, let's just clarify this just with a very straightforward theorem. I'm just going to write the theorem right here so we can refer to it. Theorem. Theorem. If A is non-singular, Then E, the echelon form, E equals the identity, and we find A inverse. A inverse by solving. A identity, row actions, row actions, row actions until we get to E, B, and E equals identity, and B equals A inverse, okay? But if A is singular, this fails because E is not equal to I, but that is okay because A has no inverse. Okay? It has no inverse. I'm going to write the because A has no inverse better. It's okay because A has no inverse. Why? Why does A have no inverse? Well, A has no inverse because we showed that if A did have an inverse, this is this work on the right here, if A did have an inverse, then A would have to be non-singular. If A has an inverse, then A is non-singular. So that means that since A is, when A is singular, then it can't possibly have an inverse. The only times it has an inverse is when it's non-singular. This is called the contrapositive logically. 
in logic, it says that if you have a statement, a fact A implies fact statement A, statement X implies statement Y, then not statement Y implies not statement X. Okay, so we have basically this fact here, this theorem we've actually proven using the right, the side on the, the work on the right is essentially the proof of this. And so now you can do your final homeworks where as you proceed through computing whether something is, is um, doing this reduction process here, if you end up where E is the identity, you found the inverse. And if you end up where E is not the identity, you have shown that it has no inverse. And that's your conclusion. Right, thank you very much.